Hello, it's Nikki. Welcome to day four. Today's episode is about pace and rhythm and trust and not necessarily being productive. And I think there's a lot of conversation, certainly in the self-development world, about productivity, of getting as much done as possible of mac there's so many podcasts of like maxing out the day and smashing it and having rock star energy and all of that and it's really interesting for me because there are so many experiences where i don't just want to do the thing for the sake of it We've all been to dinner with somebody or had a conversation or a meeting where somebody is literally not in the space. They're there because they're just, you know, oh, I haven't seen this person for a long time, so I better book a dinner in, but they're somewhere else. They're not present. They're not open to you saying, should we go for a like a cheeky cocktail afterwards or shall we do this, this and this? There is a, there's sort of like a structure to what they're doing and it's about like just doing the thing and filling your diary and getting the job done whereas I know in this day and age you want to have a bit more enjoyment and one of the things that this has come up for me is that since I had my first child in 2015 I really moved away from blog posts and writing, even though I absolutely love to write, into more videos and podcasts. Because I've had two children that don't necessarily like to sleep very much, um, I didn't know what their schedule was ever going to be like. And so I knew that from a very practical point, I could sit down and make a five minute video or podcast. And every time I posted something, I would get inquiries or opportunities or sales. And I knew that that was a win-win. I knew it was worth my time. I knew it was an excellent um, use of my time. And so when I started to think about blog posts that, you know, if I could make six videos that were each five minutes long in the same 30 minutes that it would take me to um, write a blog, it was a no brainer. I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to do the video thing until I had a moment of really saying, but why can't I do both? If I'm saying that I want to write and one of the things that I would love to do, and I will be very honest about this. I'd love to write another book one day. I'd like to, um, have much more of a presence. It's, it's a skill I'd really like to hone. I had to ask myself, why aren't you doing it? Are you not doing it because the productivity is more important? And I think it's one of those things sometimes that we don't do the second option because the first is too easy and we've got too used to it. And we don't want to be outside of our comfort zone. And why would we go and do that thing half an hour's drive away rather than like, oh, should we just go to our local pub? The amount of times I do that in London where I'm like, why am I not exploring London? Why am I not leaving my postcode? And that has definitely been something that we've been trying to do as a family over the last couple of years is saying, why do we eat at the same places? Or maybe you're looking at your food in your cupboards and being like, yeah, I buy the, I mean, you know, your supermarket will tell you what you buy and then send you offers. And you're like, oh yeah, I buy that thing every week. Thanks. Thanks for reminding me of that. But one of the things that I've realized is that for cook with cooking, for example, I really like to cook. No, I really like to eat. (laughs) That's the difference there. I really like to eat. And so therefore, I'm really interested in what I cook. That, that's the way around. That's the honesty right there. But I know that there are some things that I can run around the supermarket. I know the ingredients for my version of spag bol. I can come home, I can put it in the slow cooker or I can make it on the stove 
And it's just a no brainer. I can be watching something or talking to somebody. It's just so easy and I can do it automatically. But I also know that I've got a huge um, shelf of so many other recipe books that if I take the time and I sit down with them and I pick a recipe and I go out and I buy the ingredients and I learn how to do it, it's so satisfying. And yes, it takes longer, but it builds that muscle. It allows me to do different things. A couple of weeks ago, or months rather, I was in M&S, we've got one very close to us, and I grabbed their food magazine that they have. And in it, I saw a mushroom biryani. And it was those big chunky mushrooms on the top. It looked delicious. And the first thing I always do is go to the ingredients list. Now, if there is 25 ingredients, I'm probably not going to do it because I like to just be able to grab what I need. And again, that might be a limiting belief. That might be something that I stretch this muscle so much that I then delve into the 25 ingredient thing. But it felt really straightforward. Also, I don't like it when I buy all the ingredients for something. I make it and then it doesn't taste that good. That's very frustrating for me. But basically, I bought the ingredients for this mushroom biryani and it was so simple, so delicious and just so pleasing. I feel like it was one of those that I'm like, oh, I can pull out that recipe anytime I need it. I'll I'll make it again. Love it. Was really, really happy. And so when I was thinking about this in terms of business, I was thinking, if my end goal is to grow my writing, I've actually got to write. I've actually got to prioritize that time for that skill. But that is not always the goal. Sometimes there are things that you need to focus on that want your time, your effort, your consideration. And I think this bro marketing, this aggressive like, oh, it's not worth my time or have I got space in that? No, because I'm smashing this goal or whatever. We know that there is always room for magic and that things will happen in a different kind of way. And so I want to keep increasing those things. Somebody might not have ever resonated with a video or a podcast and come across something that I've written, which then leads them in a different way, a different path. And so bear that in mind, not only for yourself of the things that you want to do this year, but be open to the different directions that you can go in to get to your goal. I hope this has been useful. Please let me know what worked, what resonated, what you're going to do. I will be your accountability pal and I'll see you tomorrow for day five. Check out my website, nickyraby.com, and yeah, happy scribbling. I'll see you in a bit.